Open a can with your bare hands? Make a pre-sliced banana? And how do you cut a hard-boiled egg like this? Stay tuned for amazing food hacks. You can make a really cool snack by chopping a hot dog sausage in half, then thread one of the halves onto a skewer, and using a small knife, sit it on the skewer at a slight angle, and rotate the sausage to make a nice spiral cut all the way down, like this. When you're done, stretch it out along the skewer. Next, take some pancake mix, and add a small amount of water, so you can knead it into a bread-like dough. Tear off a piece, roll it into a long worm, and twist it down the skewer in between the sausage, to make a sausage and batter swirl. Cook them off in a frying pan with some oil, and make sure they're cooked all the way around. After a few minutes, they're ready to serve. Pretty cool, huh? They taste great and they go really well with a dip. You can do a similar thing with a potato. Slide it onto a skewer, place it onto a chopping board, and use a sharp knife to put a thin spiral cut all the way down to the end. Fan it out along the skewer, and place it onto a baking tray. Add a little cooking oil, and bake them in the oven. They go really well alongside a healthy meal, or to accompany a burger. You can use this apple coring and slicing gadget to make your own potato wedges. It's really quick and simple. Just place them on a baking tray, give them a light coating of oil, and dust over whatever spices you might like. Then bake them in the oven until they're cooked. If you're also serving pizzas, but find there's not enough space to fit them both in properly, chop them in half, and place them on an oven rack like this. They should now slide neatly into your oven. And when they're cooked, you can slice them up as normal. If you want to steal some pizza without anyone knowing, you can cut it like this. Take a slice out of the middle first, and remove it, then push the two halves together. And do exactly the same again. Then finally push all four pieces together, and cut it as you would normally. Serve it on a plate, and no one would ever know. If you need to peel some garlic, rather than using your hands which can make them smell, you can just put the whole garlic into a saucepan. Place on the lid and hold it down firmly, then give it a good shake. After a few seconds, the garlic breaks up, and starts to peel the cloves. Shake it a little more, and look how well it works. If you're cooking rice and you want to add a little extra flavour, simply add a vegetable stock cube as it's cooking, and stir it in. If you want to make some crushed ice for a drink, put some ice cubes into a freezer bag, place it onto a chopping board, and give it a good whack with a saucepan. Instant crushed ice, and perfect for a drink. If you want to cool down a can of drink really quickly, I'll show you how. You can see these are at room temperature, which are 24 degrees Celsius or 75 degrees Fahrenheit. To cool them down really quickly, we can pour a bit of water into a bowl, then top it up with ice cubes. Next, sprinkle over a couple of tablespoons of cooking salt, give it a good mix, then submerge a can. Basically, adding salt causes the ice to melt faster, but to do this, it needs to draw heat energy from wherever possible. In this case, out of our can, which causes the drink to rapidly cool down. I gave it a good stir after a minute, then, after a couple of minutes, I took the can out, and let's see how the temperature compares to the can we measured earlier. Wow! After just two minutes in the ice and salt water, the temperature has dropped down dramatically to 5 degrees C, which is 41 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a huge drop in temperature. There's only one thing we can say. Pretty cool, huh? If you're enjoying this video, you might want to consider subscribing so you don't miss my future content. If you want to cool down a glass of room temperature wine, here's a great tip to help you. You can keep some grapes in a Ziploc freezer bag, seal it up, and keep them in the freezer. Then, if you find you're pouring yourself a glass of room temperature wine and you want to cool it down quickly, you can drop in a couple of frozen grapes. These will act as ice cubes, but it won't dilute your drink like it would with water. If you give a can of baked beans a good shake before you open them, they'll easily tip out into a bowl or a saucepan, and you won't get any sticking at the back of the can. If your can opener has broken, and you're trying to open a can which hasn't got a ring pull on, you could actually open it in an emergency by rubbing the seam at the top over the top of some sandpaper. Keep sanding and sanding until you open up the seam and can see the individual layers. The lid of the can and the sides are no longer wrapped around each other. Wipe off any dust, and you can open the can by just giving it a good squeeze. With the seam sanded open, the lid was more like a tight-fitting cap pushed on top. And another crazy hack to open a can is to use a spoon. Grip it like this, hold on to the can, 
Then start rubbing the tip of the spoon back and forward on the top while pushing down to make a groove. Keep going and you should pierce a hole right through the top like this. Then use the edge of the spoon to cut all the way around the top. Keep going and when you get round far enough you can fold open the top. Of course opening a can like this does make a really sharp and jagged edge so you do need to be careful. You can make an emergency food grater by drilling a series of holes in the side of a can, then clean out any metal swarf. Use some pliers to snap off any burrs and give it a good wash. Then I used the back of the drill bit to bend out the holes to form a cutting edge like on a grater. And it's ready to use. I'm grating this cheese and it doesn't take long to have a decent amount. These spiralising gadgets are really cool. They work really well, but they are a little laborious to use after a while. If you want to speed things up, you can take a wire coat hanger and cut out a section like this, place it into your drill, and use this to turn your produce instead of your hands. I'm pushing it onto the firm bit at the back of my courgette, and even though it's not on straight, look at it go. It works really well. Just make sure you stop before the metal prongs hit the metal blade. And it worked great with carrots too. It really saves some time. For the next one I'm taking a slice of white bread, rolling it out nice and flat with a rolling pin, then laying over some sliced cheese. I'm also adding a thin piece of ham. Then starting from the bottom, roll it all up into a nice tight roll like this, and lightly fry them off in some oil. Rotate them every couple of minutes so they're cooked all the way around. And when they're done we've got these delicious ham and cheese toasted dippers. Beautiful melted cheese. And it goes great with guacamole. Or sour cream and chive. If you've got a scratch on a piece of wooden furniture that won't polish out, you can take a walnut and rub it back and forth across the scratch. And up and down. Then give it a wipe over and it's as good as gone. If you're having a barbecue, you can also use walnuts to help light the coals. Stack a couple up together and they burn really well. These stayed alight for more than five minutes. You can also use pretzels. I stacked three up together like this and look how well they burn. And we're getting a really crazy smoke pattern here. Or you could use Doritos. These also work really well. Just make a small pile and light them up. Start piling the charcoal up around, and it doesn't take long for it to really get going. If you want to make a burger with a bit of a difference, you can use a drinking glass to cut a hole out of the centre. Then while it's cooking, crack an egg inside. Make sure it's cooked on both sides. I'm also adding cheese. And there we have an amazing burger. Cut it in half and you can see the egg inside. A muffin tray is a great way to serve sauces and dips at your barbecue. And you can even add small salad pieces for your burger like cucumbers and tomatoes. You can use teaspoons to help make a nice frozen yoghurt snack. Make a slit in the centre of your yoghurt pot lid, then push through a teaspoon. The lid will help to keep it centralised and upright. I did this with all six, then placed it in the freezer. The following day they're frozen solid and ready to eat. Just snap one off and peel off the lid. And you can put the rest back in the freezer for later. If you've got a pack of lollipop sticks, you can of course use these instead of teaspoons. I'm using them to make these mini ones. If you find your popsicle or lollipop starts melting before you finished it, which often happens with small children, you can take a cupcake paper, make a small slice in the bottom, and slide it over the stick to act as a drip tray and stop those sticky fingers. And you can also use it on the frozen yoghurts we made earlier too. Next I'm going to show you how to make this amazing pre-sliced banana. To make it we're going to need to use a needle or pin, then take your banana and choose one of these lines to work on. Use your needle and poke all the way into the fruit, but don't come out of the other side. Then move it back and forth left and right like this. This is actually slicing the fruit underneath the skin. When you're done, move the needle down a little and do exactly the same again. Work your way down the whole banana and you should have something that looks like this. You can actually just see the holes, so when you show it to someone, turn it around and hide them. Then it's ready to peel. Open it up in front of someone and they'll be amazed by your pre-sliced banana. Another way to slice a banana is using a metal cooling rack like this. Sit it on top of a bowl, then take a banana and carefully peel half of it. We want to leave the skin on one half like this. 
Then place it on top of the cooling rack and carefully push it through from one end up to the other. If we look from underneath, you can see what happens. As we push it through, it neatly slices the banana and it falls into the bowl. It's a really handy technique if you need to slice a lot of bananas in one go. It's nice and quick and safer than using a knife. Perfect if you're making a nice big fruit salad or something. And it also works well on other soft fruit like avocado. Cut it in half and remove the stone. And this time I'm using a cooling rack with square holes. Mash it through and there we go. Perfect if you're making guacamole. If you've got an avocado which isn't quite soft yet and you want to help speed up the ripening process, you can take some tin foil and wrap the avocado up in it. Then put it into an oven dish and place it in the oven at about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 90 degrees Celsius. Warming the avocado up gently releases gas which surrounds it and helps speed up the ripening process. After about 10 minutes, take it out, place it on a cooling rack and leave it to completely cool down. Once it's cooled down, remove the foil and it's ready to eat. Cut it in half, remove the stone and you should now find it soft, ripe and perfect for eating. If you're cooking hard-boiled eggs, when they're ready you can tip out the hot water and cool them down with cold. Then fill the pan up about halfway and put on the lid. Hold it on really firmly and give the pan a good shake. When you take the lid off you can see the eggs are half peeled. And the rest of the shell removes really easily by just brushing it off with your thumbs. Next I'm going to show you how to do this really cool egg hack. Take a drinking straw and use a pair of scissors to cut the ends like this. Fold it in half so it makes a V-shape like this. Take your egg and insert the straw so it makes a cut. Pull it out and keep going round so it makes a zigzag cut all the way around the egg. Once you've finished, you should be able to lift it off and reveal the yolk. And it looks really cool. And depending where and how big the yolk is inside the egg, you'll find you get a completely different outcome. You can use a fruit juice container to make a heart-shaped egg. Peel a hard-boiled egg, then sit it on top of the fruit juice container that we cut out so it looks like this. Next, take a chopstick and use some elastic bands at each end to hold it in place. This is now pulling down and forming a dip at the top of the egg and a V-shape at the bottom. Leave it to sit in the fridge for an hour or two, then undo it and it looks like this. And when we cut it in half, you get this amazing heart-shaped egg. Perfect to serve up with a salad. If you want some fresh butter but you didn't take it out of the fridge in time, it can be hard and really difficult to spread. It can just rip your bread and make a bit of a mess. If you try putting it in a microwave, you have to be very, very careful or you might end up with just a big plate of fat like this. But what you can do is take a drinking glass, fill it with some really warm water and let it stand for a minute to heat up the glass. Then empty it out and dry the glass and place it upside down over the butter. Leave it there for a few minutes so the heat from the glass radiates around the butter and gently heats it up and the butter should now be ready to spread. It picks up on the knife a lot easier and although it's not quite perfect, it is a lot easier. If you're making some pastry but you haven't got a rolling pin, you can use a glass bottle instead. I've taken the label off and I'm giving it a dusting of flour to stop it from sticking. But it works really well. And a wine glass makes an excellent cookie cutter. And if you need to roll something to a thin uniform thickness, you can use a couple of kebab skewers to help. Place your dough in the middle and roll it out like this. The skewers act as a spacer giving you a beautiful flat uniform layer of dough. You can use a cupcake tray like this to make amazing cookie dough bowls. Using some butter, grease up individual moulds like this. We're not going to do every one because the mixture will spread as it bakes and we don't want it to all stick together. Next, take a handful of cookie dough and spread it over the back of the tray like this. I'm doing six all together. Then bake in the oven as normal. When they're ready, take them out and let them cool for a few minutes. Then pop one off the tray and there we have a cookie dough bowl. Delicious to serve with ice cream and maybe some chocolate sauce. Now I'm going to show you a really cool trick for whipping cream. If you're pouring it into a bowl and using a whisk, it can take a really long time and it's difficult if you're doing small amounts. So instead, you can take a clean glass jar and pour the cream into there. Leave a bit of space at the top and if you like, you can sweeten it with a spoon of sugar. Then screw the lid tightly onto the jar and give it a good shake. Keep shaking and shaking and shaking and after a few minutes you'll have made delicious perfectly whipped cream. It tastes delicious and is perfect for serving with your dessert or even in a coffee. 
And because it's already in a screw top jar, you can just put the lid on and store it in the fridge. You can make a really nice dessert by cutting the top off an apple, then use a spoon to hollow it out like this. Leave the side wall about a centimetre thick. Next I'm filling mine with some stewed apple which I made earlier, then finishing it with an oaty crumble topping. Place it on a baking tray, and I'm making four all together. Then put them in the oven and leave them to bake. When they're ready, take them out, and we've got these amazing apple crumble apples. They go really well with ice cream, or the cream we just whipped. If you're having a slice of dessert and you want to decorate it, you can use a vegetable peeler to make some beautiful chocolate shavings. Or take a slab of chocolate and, using a knife blade, carefully shave the back of the chocolate like this to make these beautiful delicate curls. Once you've made enough, you can sprinkle them over your dessert. If you want to see more amazing food hacks or kitchen gadgets, you can click on the links. Have fun, stay safe, and as always, thanks for watching!